Okay, in this video we're going to talk about the domain of solutions to differential equations. Um, this will come up when you're taking Calc A, B, or B, C, and it could definitely be on the um, AP exam. So let's take a look because it's not a super challenging topic, but it's one that students kind of just overlook sometimes, I think. Um, so the solution to a differential equation, this is kind of where the issue comes up. So first of all, it must be a function. And since it must be a function, that means that after you uh, do whatever you do to find the solution, make sure you actually solve for y. So you can't end up with like y squared or y cubed, something like that. You have to actually solve for y. So it must be a function. And then the second part is that it must be, and there's a couple things here, it must be continuous. And it has to be continuous on an open interval. And that interval needs to contain the initial condition. So it must be continuous on an open interval containing the initial condition. And that's a lot of information. Um, and it's where the issue with the domain really pops up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at uh, a couple of examples. Um, so here we want to solve dy dx equals one over the quantity x plus three squared. And then we have two different initial conditions. So first, f of negative four is one and then um, f of negative two is one. So two different things. So what I do when I look at this, when I'm thinking about solving it, is I just look at the differential equation and I see, is there anything that would um, make the differential equation undefined? So basically, are we uh, dividing by zero at any point? So I know that x cannot be negative three because that would make the denominator zero and lots of problems. So that means that the domain of my solution, which needs to be continuous, is either going to be x is less than negative three or x is greater than negative three, but it can't be both because I won't get a continuous solution if that happens. Um, so that's what I approach the problem with now. So that's in the back of my mind as I solve. Um, this isn't super hard to solve, so I kind of just solved it ahead of time. Uh, so here I get y is equal to negative one over x plus three. Now what you wanna do is look at the initial condition um, which has an x coordinate of negative four, and then think which of those two intervals that I can choose from would contain x equals negative four. So my final answer is f of x is negative one over x plus three, um, where x is less than negative three, because I need to be able to get to negative four so that I can use the initial condition. And then uh, for part b, I also solved it, kind of like out of the video. I got this after I solved for c, um, but I still need to think. So in the original, x could not be negative three. Uh, also here, x cannot be negative three. Um, so I have to choose so that I can include negative two. If I wanna get to negative two, I need x to be greater than negative three. So my final answer for this is gonna be two minus one over x plus three, such that x is greater than negative three. All right, so that's two examples. I solved them ahead of time. I think you can go through and do them on your own. Um, now let's take a look at another thing. So here's an actual problem from an AP exam. So it was 2006 AB number five, um, and it kind of ends up looking like this. So consider the differential equation dy dx equals one plus y over x, where x is not equal to zero. So they're pointing that out to you. And then part B, part A was to draw a slope field at like six points or something. Um, so for part B, it says find the particular solution, y equals f of x, to the differential equation. So find a particular solution just means solve the differential equation um, with the initial condition, which means solve for c, f of negative one equals one, and state its domain. Okay, so this is actually the first time I remember this really coming up on an AP exam, uh, I don't know, like since the 90s, I guess. Um, but here it is. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna solve the differential equation. So this looks separable to me because um, y is the dependent variable and you see it showed up on the right hand side. Anytime that happens, you're pretty much looking at separation of variables. So I'm gonna separate. Um, but again, think, so x is in the denominator, x can't be zero, that was pointed out to you. Look at the initial condition. Um, the initial condition had x be negative one. So we actually already know the domain, right? We had to choose either x is less than zero or greater than zero. In this case, x is definitely less than zero. And now we're kind of ready to go. So let's see if we can do it. So I'm gonna separate. So here's the original. Bring everything with a y to the left, everything with an x to the right. 
So dy over one plus y and equals dx over x, gotta integrate. Um, I get natural logs on both sides. So natural log absolute value of one plus y, natural log absolute value of x um, plus c. What I like to do is exponentiate before I solve for c, so I'm gonna exponentiate and uh, there are other videos where I talk about this. This is gonna go straight to one plus y equals c e to the natural log of the absolute value of x. I see the um, e to the natural log of blah because e and natural log are inverses. So e to the natural log of blah is just whatever blah is. So this will simplify again to c to, uh, one plus y equals c times the absolute value of x. I'm gonna let that c absorb the absolute value, right? It's really like c times uh, positive x if x is greater than zero, c times negative x if x is less than zero. But since c is an arbitrary constant, I can actually just write it as one plus y equals c times x, like a new value of c, but it's still just an unknown arbitrary constant. I'm gonna use the initial condition. So one plus one equals c times negative one. Um, so I know that c is negative two. And that means that my solution is y equals negative two x minus one. But I have to make note again of this x is less than uh, zero. So my domain is x is less than zero. All right, so that's where it would come up on the free response. On multiple choice, you can often use the initial condition and the concept of domain and range of the solution um, to eliminate like two, three, sometimes four of the choices. Well, I guess there's only four choices now, so two or three of the choices. Um, but anyway, I hope you found this helpful and good luck.